on the go. This is Valley News Live, 10 at 10. We begin tonight with new information on the man killed in an avalanche in southern Montana this weekend. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Krista Bain. The snowmobiler who died is from Bismarck, and the 33-year-old rider became trapped under six feet of snow on the southeast face of Sheep Mountain in Gallatin National Forest. That's just outside of Cook City in Montana. Five people were riding snowmobiles when the victim got stuck. That started the avalanche, which buried three of them. One was buried to his chest while the other was completely buried. They both deployed their airbags and escaped relatively unharmed. The Forest's Avalanche Center says the man who died was equipped with an inflatable airbag but was unable to deploy it. His name has not been officially released, though family has been notified. The avalanche danger is rated high in this area. Minnesota State University of Moorhead is home to local and international students who come to further their education. For some students, their degree is a way to begin a whole different life. Valley News Team's Giovanna Simic spoke with a Gambian student who was seeking asylum after her education was ripped away by her own family. For MSUM student Kari Suso, education is a top priority. Being in school is all what I live for, it's all what I have. She dreams of one day being a doctor, but coming from Gambia, her parents have a different plan, an arranged marriage. Her uncle has sponsored her education, but her parents convinced him to stop the funding so she can return to Gambia. My family has actually decided a long time that I should get married. My younger sisters, two of them are married. At the age of 16 to 17, they got married. So I'm the only one. Being at 23, not married, mean, in my community means a big taboo for us. If she returns, she will be forced to undergo genital mutilation, a practice that has been outlawed. But her professors are standing beside her, stepping up to keep her here. Professor Brian Wisenden started a GoFundMe page to help Kari pay her outstanding fees and future costs stay at MSUM. It's heartbreaking listening to uh, this person with great intentions and great uh, potential to be kind of trapped in this impossible situation. Someone like him being able to do such thing to me, for me, I can pay him back. The only thing I can say is thank you. Kadi is seeking asylum in the U.S. and meeting with a lawyer so she can live her life differently than her sisters. Going back to Gambia, um, I think dying will be better than going back. Because I don't want to go through it. Not just the genital mutilation, but marrying someone you don't know, you don't care about, or just made for the first time, and going through those traditions is really crazy. Yovana Simic, Valley News Live. So far, more than $5,500 has been donated on the GoFundMe page, and you can find the information on our website, valleynewslive.com. Hate attacks on Muslims have spiked across the country after recent acts of terrorism targeting Muslims, their mosques, and businesses, and the attacks have tripled this year, and the bulk have occurred in recent weeks. According to a tally by a California State University San Bernardino College professor, there have been 38 anti-Muslim attacks in the U.S. since the deadly terrorist attacks in Paris, and 18 of those happened in the wake of the attack in San Bernardino. The FM area has an estimated 5 to 6,000 Muslims, and today the Islamic Society here opened its doors in an effort to settle uneasy feelings in the community and to clear up misunderstandings of what Islam is. Hundreds slipped off their shoes and entered the mosque for a chance to meet Muslim community members learn about Islam and sample ethnic foods. The society hopes to counter the growing fear and stereotype about Muslims and ensure that the Fargo-Moorhead area remains a safe, welcoming, and family-friendly place. Just because there's a war out there or some crazy stuff that's happening in the Middle East or some crazy, you know, terrorists, you know, blowing up things, that doesn't mean that we are, you know, uh, we shouldn't be really categorized with this. And uh, the whole event here is just to show our hospitality and you know our love for the community despite religious differences we're all people living in the same community and hopefully striving for the same goals of health and happiness and that everyone can just live together 
Another open house is planned in January, and there are five Islamic centers in North Dakota, which are open to everyone regardless of faith or background. Fargo police are investigating a possible aggravated assault after finding a man unconscious outside a bar. Police responded around midnight after staff at the bowler found him laying outside. He did regain consciousness and was taken to a Fargo hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. Police do not have a suspect and cannot confirm it was an aggravated assault as it still remains under investigation. The countdown is on for holiday shoppers, and by the looks of West Acres Mall, there are plenty of procrastinators rushing to get the gifts they need, with Christmas four days away now. West Acres Mall was filled with people looking to get everything crossed off their list. The last Saturday before Christmas, or Super Saturday, is a major day of revenue for retailers. The closer it comes, the busier the mall will get. I work all the time and watch my grandkids and I just run out of time and I'm just a procrastinator by nature. I got mine all done, so why anyone would wait till Christmas Eve to do their shopping, I don't know. But some do a reminder, if you do, West Acres Mall will be open Christmas Eve from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And stick with us. A few helpful tips if you're stressing out about holiday shopping is later on Valley News Live 10 at 10. And as you pack up those gifts you purchase into the car and hit the road, you'll see another present at the gas station when you fill up. North Dakota sees an average gas price at $1.95 a gallon. But at Don's Car Wash on 52nd Avenue South, it sits at $1.64 a gallon, the cheapest in the state. Minnesota's average sits at about $1.87 overall. And gas prices went down about $0.04 cents over the past two weeks to $2.06 a gallon bringing prices back to where they were in April 2009. This drop comes from the decrease in crude oil prices. The cost per barrel is down several dollars.